Man and dog intro. More personality this time because it's got dog personality and dogs are really popular on the internet. The problem with this dog is she's like on cue stubborn there. That is superb. Enjoy. The Mega Drive and Amiga had some kind of symbiotic relationship. Maybe parasitic, I'm not sure. Each format would trade its games, porting them one way or the other, and it put owners of either format in a unique position in that they actually had games from another format to play. That thrilling fact firmly in mind, I decided to look at a bunch of these ports in a bunch of different videos and say words about them. Cool? Cool. Here are the ones I think are the weirdest, strangest and oddest ports to the Mega Drive from the Amiga and vice versa. To me, Syndicate is up there with the weird ports I would call most. What began life on the Amiga and PC, admittedly, is a tactical team-based game of cynical satire and dark cyberpunk themes, as well as wholesale violent nihilistic slaughter, became some kind of knockoff semi-anime cartoon em up though with just as much civilian murder. The Mega Drive version of Syndicate should still get props, dare I admit it, for carrying over the basic themes, objectives and so on from the original, but it lost far more in translation than it could ever make up for, and the flavour of console port cooked up for this Amiga and PC great was rightly laughed out of town. Obligatory, yes I know it was on SNES too. Turrican 2 is an imperfect gem, a classic Euro shooter made by a talented bunch of developers, drawing influences from the Contras and Metroids of the time and giving us folks a taste of true console-like gaming on the Amiga. Should point out it was made for the C64 initially, but the Amiga version released first and is the game's de facto home. Oh, and it had some of the best music in any game ever. It's rough around the edges and has, to be fair, aged poorly, but Turrican 2 is still a legend. The Mega Drive got Universal Soldier, and I will never understand what the hell the thinking was behind this. Apparently a conversion of Turrican 2 from the Commodore 64 source code and using the Amiga's graphics was well underway, before publisher Acclaim acquired the rights to Jean-Claude Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren's sci-fi classic, shut up it is a classic, Universal Soldier. Late in the day, the player and enemy sprites were changed to things like marines and tanks, some levels were tweaked, added or removed, and a game bearing the name Universal Soldier and with Dolph Lundgren's massive face in it was the result. It was utterly baffling, and while it was all but Turrican 2 in a new skin, it still managed to be rubbish at the same time. Truly, genuinely weird. Eagle-eyed readers will see those release years seem backwards, but I'm putting the lead format's release date first, like a smart smart man. See, probably to make up for Universal Soldier, Factor 5 went hands-on with development of the next console version, Mega Turrican. It didn't feature Dolph Lundgren, but took greater advantage of the Mega Drive's capabilities, with larger sprites, big satisfying explosions, and a genuinely great soundtrack. It was a bold statement of this is what it was supposed to be like by the series custodians, and was a fine game for its home format. For some reason its port to the Amiga, renamed Turrican 3, came out first. I will never understand the world. The game itself was in no way weird, but a bunch of business wrangling made a renamed port release the year before the originally developed version, and that's definitely weird. Turrican 3 also wasn't as good as Mega Turrican, so in arriving earlier it actually sabotaged the subsequent console release, at least a bit. Ah oh, well, at least that couldn't ever happen again. Then there was Flashback, which came with its own lead platform peculiarities to deal with. Some claim the process was straightforward, made for Amiga, ported to other formats including Mega Drive. Paul Quisset, creator of Flashback, disagrees though. In an interview with Retro Gamer, he pointed out that actually Flashback was made for the Mega Drive first and foremost, and it was actually technical limitations that held its release back. The game was heavy on frames of animation, cutscenes, all that good stuff. Ahead of its time in many ways was all flashy B. But all that data wouldn't fit on the biggest Mega Drive cartridges of the day, so Delphine was forced to create its own proof-of-concept 24 megabit cartridge to fit everything in there. 
The details are hazy, the timeline's fuzzy, but this basically meant while waiting for the cart tech to maybe be approved or possibly to be manufactured, Flashback was instead released first on the Amiga, with the Mega Drive version, remember, apparently the main version, not coming till the next year. Some details need figuring out for certain here, as it's all a bit mixed up, but nobody can sit and play Flashback on the Mega Drive and tell me that it doesn't feel like it belongs there. Naturally, I prefer the Amiga version. Hmm. An otherwise unremarkable game, as far as I'm concerned, Stormlord does find a spot on this, the list of weird ports, because its jump from Amiga to Mega Drive saw one big change. The fairies had to put clothes on. Yep, they were in the buff on the computer version. Utter filth. Slightly different tack for the weird angle here, in that Sword of Sodan didn't weird things up too much with the whole process of porting. Things were changed, it looked different, enemies would attack from both sides, which admittedly made the game too hard and it was already rock hard to begin with, but the overall porting experience was unspectacular. It was the game. The game was just weird. A fantasy hack and slash side shuffling thing, where you slowly chopped your way through ever more powerful waves of ever more fantastical enemies. Just look at it and tell me this isn't some weird stuff. You can't because you'd be lying and lying is bad and you shouldn't do it. Stop lying. And of course, save my favourite for last. It Came From the Desert on Amiga was one of Cinemaware's classic story-led joy bombs, the sort of games critics would always be divided on, but us at home, being about six years old at the time of its release, would absolutely adore. It was, as you'd guess from the developer's name, so cinematic. It incorporated a freeform exploration mechanic, it was open world before open world was a thing, it mixed genres and styles, it was creepy and campy and silly and serious, and it was more intelligent than I think people give it credit for. In no way would I claim It Came From The Desert is an objectively great game, but I'd have to lump it in there as a genuine classic all the same. This was the Mega Drive port. It was finished, or near enough finished, before being cancelled. You play a character called Buzz, an attitude-toting bug killer, and I mean that's his job, he's an exterminator. His dad explodes into a big green walking ant thing. Spoilers. He can't walk over loose sand without dying. He kills so many ants. How Cinemaware could go from a truly unique special experience in the original release to this derivative bizarre garbage is completely beyond me. It's absolutely no surprise the Mega Drive version was cancelled before release, but it doesn't stop this from being the weirdest Amiga to Mega Drive port I've ever encountered. And that, folks, is that. Bye!